Hi, everybody. Welcome to Oh Just Talk. I am Vonda. There's Lydia. Hey. And once again, we're blessed with Will's presence. So hey. I'll go around the table really quick. And um, Lydia, we'll start with you. Mm -hmm. My name is Lydia, and I'm an Air Force veteran. I have five kids, and I've been married 25 years. For those who don't know any of this little tidbits, um, I used to be a minister. Now I'm not. <laughs> it is what it is. Mm. <laughs> okay. Man, I love um, drinking my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Will, um, retired Air Force veteran, um, you know, done a whole lot of consulting, um, private sector, government, stuff like that. And um, yeah, you can find me on Twitter, uh, Chili underscore Willie underscore Junior. So Chili Willie Junior. Um, I post a lot of um, just thought provoking comments. I also post a lot of things about food because I'm a big foodie. Um, so if you didn't see my bacon post this morning, it's out there. I miss that one. And I am Vonda. You can find me on all social media outlets at Oh Vonda. And let me just put this disclaimer out there before we get started. We are not reporters. We're not professionals. This podcast is simply for us to just get together and talk. Lydia and I have been best friends for almost 30 years. So it's just to give our viewpoints about current events and about some of our personal life experiences right so um with that being said today we're going to be discussing forgiveness mm -hmm. um and different situations different aspects um of forgive of forgiveness mm -hmm. so um i'm going to let will kick this Aww. Oh, cool. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome, Will. Thank you. I, I do what I can. <laughs> so uh, the other thing, too, I would add to this for the audience is that this is totally unscripted. Totally. Yes. Totally unscripted. Oh. So, you know, some of the thoughts and some of the ideas you guys are going to hear um, are the reason they're going to come up so fast is because this is really how we feel. Um, so I, I, I yeah. do want to thank Vonda for this platform to talk about real issues that, that we think about just as normal everyday, everyday folks. But um, I was thinking um, the other day, I, I put a tweet out about, you know, how many people were, you know, before Trump got, uh, got COVID, how many people were saying, whether in jest or serious, you know, that they hope he gets COVID. And mm -hmm. then, they'll under, then he'll understand, he'll get it. You know, and after um, 204, you're probably one of them, <laughs> about two, I think it's 204,000 um, um, Americans who have perished under COVID, um, you know, and, and God bless them and, and, and their families may rest in peace and may their families recover um, from that loss, an unnecessary loss of that. Mm -hmm. um, when people were secretly wishing that Trump would get COVID now that he has it, and, you know, do you still really feel that way? Do you really feel like, yeah, I'm glad he has it or, you know, I'm, I, would, I don't wish COVID on anybody because um, some of us may have experienced, um, you know, a loved one or a family member or some, we know somebody that knows somebody. Mm -hmm. um, and like we're my, in my mom's um, case, my mom, you know, she's uh, nearly 80. Um, she has three colleagues, three friends that she, that she you know, used to, um, you know, talk to all the time on a regular basis um, in Detroit. And they died of COVID. So it's very real to me when, when my mom, you know, she said to me, you know, my, I miss my friends, you know, they, they died of COVID and like people couldn't come to see them and stuff like that. Um, it was real to her. So I guess the, the real subject is like when you wish something bad to happen to someone and it really happens, do you really feel like they deserve it? Lydia, you want to go? I'm going to let you go. I'm going to go last. <laughs> okay. Um, so I have wished that something bad would happen to him. I'm not, I'm not happy. I'm not proud of that. Uh, and the reason why is a couple, about three weeks ago, I had, um, I was just looking at the whole situation, what's going on in the U.S. and everything. And I'm just really 
not terrified, but very concerned about a civil war in the United States. And I felt like no matter what happened, if he won, if Tr Donald Trump wins, if Donald Trump loses, we're going to have a civil war or some kind of civil unrest in the United States because of his supporters, because of his influence. And I just don't think th that he's going to leave. If he, if he does win, he's, I don't think he's going to leave peacefully. And if he doesn't win, I just see just so much going on. And so what I, I, I was thinking about it, and I told my husband, because I told this to Vonda uh, yesterday, but, or the day before, anyway, it doesn't matter. But uh, I told her that, I mean, I actually said, you know, the only way we're getting out of this is if he dies. Mm. And so something I'm not proud of, I actually went into prayer after that. And I said, God, you see what's going on? I said, if he is, if he is not, if he is not going to bring peace to, to our country, take him out. I said that. And I prayed that. And then once I saw this COVID stuff, I felt bad. I was like, Lord, did I pray it like a witchcraft prayer or some kind of crap like that? Uh -huh. But, um, you know, but I know what my, where my heart was. I was concerned for the whole country the, as a whole, that this is where we're heading. And that was my concern. So I, I do feel bad, but that he got sick and I don't want him, even though I don't like the things that he does, mm. I personally don't want him to, I, I don't wish him anybody to end up with this sickness because I know how bad it is. I've seen Vonda's mother pass from it. I've seen mm. my uncle pass from it. I've seen my um, daughter, you know, somebody else pass from it. And my cousin currently has it. My uncle, I've known too many people who has it and I heard how painful it is. Mm -hmm. Now, if he really has it and it's that painful, I, I feel bad. Like I really feel bad. Mm -hmm. And I actually feel bad that I even admitted that on camera, but. I mean, oh, I mean, so, so, so thinking about that, Vonda, do you, do you think that, and I'm a, I'm a question kind of guy, right? Um, I'm Lydia, I'm sorry, thinking about that, Lydia. Do you think that, um, you sort of reflect it to come to a better place? Or do you think that the reality of him having it made you think about it differently? Did you feel guilty before? Like, I mean, as soon as you said it, did you think to yourself, I shouldn't be thinking this? Or did you only come to that point after you already had it? No, when I was thinking it, I, I, I knew I shouldn't be thinking that. Mm -hmm. Like I really yeah. did. Um, but when he got sick, I'm like, oh man, I feel bad. But what I felt bad for is how many people wished him ill will yeah. And I was like, man, we can't become the monsters that we're trying, that we're trying to, like, we can't be the same monster we're, 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 we're fighting, yes. yeah, 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 we're fighting. We can't do that. But um, I'm, I'm different than Vonda because we're, I, I've always been better at forgiving. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm kind of a forgiver, but I'm not, I'm still, there's some things I struggle with too. So. Uh oh, yeah. Vonda looked like she got something. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm I mean, yeah. Oh, and oh, enter the monster what do i have to forgive come right. for right what does anybody have to forgive come for that's mm -hmm. not my job that is god's job mm -hmm. if you believe in a higher power mm -hmm. that's not my job to forgive donald trump for anything mm -hmm. nothing okay he intentionally makes the decisions Mm -hmm. that he makes, I intentionally make the decisions that I make and I have to live with them and I have to stand by that. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest difference. Mm -hmm. He doesn't stand by anything. He lies constantly, right. repeatedly from big things down to little things, right. minute things. So it's not my job to forgive him for anything. He's the president of the United States of America. I am an American citizen. Mm -hmm. If anybody should be forgiving anybody, he should be forgiving himself for the way that he's treated the American people. In my oh. opinion, period. Yeah. yeah. Am I yeah. glad he has COVID-19? Yes, I am. <laughs> I hope it's not a hoax. Did well, I wish I, that he got wow. it? Yes, I did. 
Okay. My mother did not ask to go to Larkin Chase. Right. We did not place my mother in a long-term care facility because we didn't want to take care of her. My mother fell. Mm -hmm. She could not be left at home alone. My mother used to live with me. Right. Until Hurricane Michael destroyed her room. She was on oxygen. Link care got destroyed. There was no oxygen in Panama City. I got my mother out of there in less than 24 hours after Hurricane Michael. Mm -hmm. My mom didn't ask for COVID-19. My mother was doing what she was supposed to do. Right. You so, know who wasn't? So so Wait, mother. no, no, no. Okay. Okay, yeah, you know ahead. who wasn't doing what they were supposed to do? Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. My mom died on April 12th, Easter Sunday. Did Donald Trump know? Yes, he knew. That just came out when he did the interview with Bob Woodward. So I don't feel bad. Mm -hmm. I have nothing to forgive that man for. Nothing. Nothing at all, not one thing. Okay. Donald Trump's name is not on my resident. He's not paying any of my bills, not one. I don't receive any type of benefits, food stamps, welfare, whatever you want to call it, nothing. So I'm glad he has it. I hope he suffers like my mother suffered. He's the one that says it's disappearing. It's going away. It's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. So guess what? Mm -hmm. It is what it is, and he gets what he gets. That's a lot. That's a lot. You know, uh, well, let's Lydia, break it down, Will. Let's go. I, I, you, you broke it down. I was going to ask Lydia, being you know, um, you know, uh, a, a, a person of the faith, and you know, isn't isn't there a quote in the Bible? Forgive them, Lord. They know not what they do. Yeah. So. There is. There is, right? Right. So, so at, even at that spiritual level, I think there's something to be said about forgiveness. Like, I don't think necessarily that forgiveness is about letting somebody off the hook, per se. That's not yeah, what... Then how do you forgive, Will? Tell me right now, how do you forgive? And what uh, are you forgiving him for? So, so I remember I was in a, I was in a um, you know, uh, in a previous life, I will say, um, in a previous life, I remember, um, uh, I wasn't the best version of me. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and it took a little bit of soul searching to find out like why I wasn't the, the best version of me and, and why in some instances I caused somebody pain or they caused me pain or it was a cycle and this back and forth. And we've been in relationships or situations like that. Um, and the first, the first level of forgiveness for me and understanding like, why that relationship broke down was to just acknowledge that a person was only acting good, bad, or indifferent in their own best interest. They made decisions either to protect themselves, to defend themselves, or something like that. And they may have done something to hurt me. And then I did the same thing. So that's how the cycle goes on. So at the end of the day, what I realized I had, had to do, and I actually read a lot about this, what I had to do was understand that their response to cause pain to me was only because that's all they knew how to do. Like that's all they knew how to do, whether or not they were um, insightful, reflective, or just mean spirited or whatever. I had to understand that they did what they knew best to do to protect themselves. And sometimes at, at, at my peril. Right. So, so I had to understand, okay, you can't be mad at somebody for being, in Donald Trump's case for being the way he is repeatedly because you're going to always find yourself upset at like the way he is. I, you know, of course I'm angry at his policies. Of course mm -hmm. I'm angry at the way he acts as a human being. Of course I'm angry at the way he treats um, African Americans. Of course it's, it's despicable the way he talks about every race. Well, what does that That's have what he knows. Business? That's all he knows. He doesn't know anything else. I, I literally feel sorry for him. Um, but being upset at, at all he knows only allows him to live rent free in my head. And a buddy used that analogy for me and, and carrying that anger to, to just be, you know, respond to the stupidity or the, the, the cruelness of his activities. I read it, understand it, I get it. 
So then after I understood that, I had to go like, you know what, I got to forgive myself for being, a, you know, for having hate for this person, for being angry towards this person. So then it started with me. So I think a lot of times, though, what we sometimes don't do is start with self. I always say start with self. Like the mirror is literally inches from your, if you want to find a place to start, start with self. Like just let it go. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then those things I don't think have that much bearing on how you feel. Now, you've had loss, which is completely different, and I understand that. Right. So I think your perspective is different than mine. Now, if my mom passed away from COVID-19, right. might, we might be having a completely different conversation. Right. I agree. And right. completely yeah, different. but I also disagree. Yeah. Everybody's different. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So yeah. the way that people process things are different. Everybody doesn't do it the same way. There's not that's true. There's not a rule book. That's right. So for me, right. I have the ability, the way that I was made, my personality, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. When I write people off, I'm done. Right. Mm -hmm. I literally, well, I do not make the same mistakes twice. I don't. With I mean, people, I things, I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't go back. Mm -hmm. So for me, if I'm done, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Just because I release something or release somebody doesn't mean I have to have a love fest with them. That means you have rent free. You are completely rent free in my head. Completely. I have no happy thoughts, no bad thoughts. There's nothing. Yeah. There's nothing. I'm not going back. I'm not going back to somebody that has done me wrong. Smiling. Hi, how you doing? I want nothing to do with you. I don't need that energy. Right. When oh, I yeah. praise, when people show you who they are, believe them. Some people have the capability of changing. Everybody right. doesn't. That's true. To go a step further, yeah. there's no perfect human being walking around on this earth. Nobody. Mm -hmm. We that's are. Right. That's right. Not none of us are perfect. Yeah, but so 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 Vonda, um, I guess you know when we talked about um, last week when we talked about narcissist relationships, and I just just as an example, I just want to give yeah. go back to that to link this. Um, I could have, I could have felt like um, I could still harbor anger towards those people, right? And I could, but at some point, I would have to say, "That's who they are. That's just yeah. who they are, right?" And then, and then, like you say, you for, I for, I, like whatever I did for that person to make them treat me that way, like whatever, that's on them. But I have to, I have to look at myself and say, just like you, Vonda, you write people off. I think, I think my writing off, because I said in a narcissist situation, you have to go full no contact. Yeah. Right? That, yeah. That's a, that's a physical thing right there. The, the mental thing is, is just saying, you know what, I gotta, for, I gotta like give, like give this person, for, I gotta forgive this person and let them go. Cause now I can do it with a clean slate and I harbor no ill will. And even to this day, if I see some of these people on the street, I will still be kind to them, but there's only so far I'm willing to go. I will say hi, or that's it. If they bump into me, that's as far as I'm willing to go because I now have a clean conscience and clean heart. What they have is on them. I got to say something on that though. Yeah. Because you said, you know, I mean, and I agree. I mean, I'm a forgiver and for every person, it's the individual, <clears throat> the process is different. And mm -hmm. forgiveness okay. is a process. It's not yeah. like you say, turn on a switch. Okay, I forgive them. And that thought never comes back again. Right, right. It's whenever that thought comes to you, <clears throat> you have to choose to forgive them over and over again. And it's a process for each person. And the person has to start with wanting to forgive in the beginning. <clears throat> Just like, you know, AA and all these other, you know, anon you know anonymous minus places, identifying it mm -hmm. is the first step but here's the thing you with donald trump it is really hard to forgive him because not only has he lied over twenty two thousand times he's adding to that number so you forgave him for those twenty two thousand times but then he he keeps on 
And so I found in my experience, from my own experience, when I was hurt by someone in the past and I forgave them for all the stuff that happened in the past, then they hurt me again. Mm -hmm. It just opens up all the wounds from when they hurt me before. And I think that's the issue with Donald Trump. That's what makes him so hard to forgive. Yeah. You know, that's, he, he's a repeat offender, if that's the, and he continues, and he doesn't see anything wrong with what he's doing. Well, yeah. I, I, I don't know, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of think about it a little bit, somewhat similar, but like, I, just let me add this to it. Um, he, he's only a repeat offender, <clears throat> in my mind, at least my understanding is that, if you say, for instance, if we put Donald Trump as like a criminal, let's compare him like a criminal, and they say you're a repeat offender. A repeat offender is aware of of rules they are aware of norms they are aware so if they go back before the judge and the judge goes the judge says you were here before you know still in a car and now you're here again for still in a car right you're a repeat offender okay somebody like donald trump isn't like that he doesn't see himself breaking any law he doesn't see he himself. hasn't been held accountable though exactly. but, but wait but so so my, my point is this i'm only trying to make a, a little bit of point and and you know i'm not i'm not a psychologist or psychiatrist or anything like that but just make, based on my observation you, you can't call someone a repeat offender because they don't know what what um is what boundary they're crossing he had he's, well, uh, he's uh, come he's on not, now. Oh, second. Oh, he, he can be told he can be told vomit he can be told over and over and over again but based off of his behaviors, it's clear he doesn't think there's anything wrong with what he's That's doing not or what he's saying. I disagree. I disagree. Oh, no, no. Read, you should do a couple of reading. I'll send you a couple of links. He's he does privileged. not. He does not. He I does not. Will. He doesn't care. That's what I'm saying. There's no boundaries. Yeah, In exactly. order for someone to be a repeat offender, they have to have boundaries. Will. He has none. This is all I needed to read from his He has book. none. And he has none. Yes, this, no is the, this is the only thing I needed to read. Go for it. This book here. I've read it. And he, what does it say? He has he boundaries? What, you didn't read his... Oh. Well, he knows what he's doing. He does. And he, he knows, doesn't, and he doesn't he care. Right from wrong. And he doesn't care. He the doesn't. That, no, he doesn't. That's the fact right. that he doesn't care doesn't mean that he doesn't know there's boundaries. Right. If you okay, go... Okay, I'll buy that. I'll buy that. Okay, you know, I'll buy that. So like if you're driving down the road and you know there's a boundary there and you still go over it, you're, it you know that the road, you just don't care. Right. But, no. You know, but he knows that there's boundaries there. He just yeah. does what he does because yeah. he wants to. And because Be he can. Because he because can. He can. He can and get because he can, again, because he can, in his mind, he has no boundaries. See, I'm equating it to the, to, to the same thing. We can put it in different words. Saying he knows, but he doesn't care, says to him, there are no boundaries. Why do I need to care? I don't know. I don't, I don't know about that either. I don't um, know. Because part of it, I think, is the thrill of it. Could be. <laughs> our, our thrill, yeah, it could be. Yeah. You see what but he like, can get away but, with. But like the other thing, too, um, and, and, and Lydia hit on this a little bit, like 22,000 lies later, at what point do you believe the boy who cried wolf, right? Mm -hmm. And, and like Vonda, we were talking about, you know, do we really believe he has COVID? Uh, we've been lied to so much. Like, do, I mean, <laughs> should we believe him? Who should we believe? What's the yeah. truth? Like things like that. And, like, and what are your thoughts on that, Vonda? I don't know. There's no, and this is the, with Donald Trump, unfortunately, there's no way that we are ever really going to know. The American people will never know definitively whether that man tested positive or not, there's no way. He has gotten away with everything. There's no everything. way we'll ever know. Everything. Everything. Yeah. He has not been held accountable for any of his decisions. I mean, come on, he's on tape. He knew about COVID-19. But he doesn't care. So we, there's no, I don't, I don't know. I don't know whether he has it or not. But what I can tell you is what I said at the beginning. I hope he does. I hope he suffers uh, just like my mom. But I know he won't because he's the president of the United States. So he's going to have the best care possible. But 
I hope he has it. I, I have mean, having the best care doesn't mean that he's not going to feel pain, right? It's I don't know. Just, just going to be minimized. Unless they give him, yeah, lots of painkillers. I mean, yeah. I think Vonda made a post about this. I wish my, you know, I think you said something. I wish my mom had the same care as he yeah, has. Yeah, my mom had the same care. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, my mom died alone. Alone. Yeah, I'm sorry. To, sorry to hear that. That's terrible. We couldn't go there. Right. We couldn't, we couldn't see her. Nobody could. She died alone. Yeah. So, you know, even in this case of, uh, even in this case of, of Donald Trump being in the hospital and, and telling all of these fibs and everything, I mean, when they were talking about, and, and we've probably seen this in the media, transfer of power, he just didn't even want to let that go. Like, right. He didn't even want to let, he didn't even want to give the vice president temporary power while he has, mm -hmm. which just goes to show how much he values power. Mm -hmm. Like even even at even at the most um, vulnerable situation, uh, even in his um, his physical state, you know, at his age and being um, obese and things like that, and having COVID nineteen, which is which is quite lethal. I mean, we know the lethality of it. We can just look at the numbers. He still didn't want to just let go of power for just like a day, and you know, let let the VP take her. So that just really goes to show something about the psychology of of a person when they think like there are no boundaries don't care. Like I'm still, I'm still in charge. And to me, it's just, um, I don't know. It's just very interesting to just say, I think, that, you know, once his presidency is over, I think we're going to have so many case studies and books about, um, you know, his leadership style, his management style, his, 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 just the way he told lies. There's lots of books out now about that, but I just think this is a really good example of, um, it just his way of thinking. But I think there needs to be a lot of books about is the United States antiquated system. Voting system? The election Constitution, system? Not just voting. Mm -hmm. How was it that Donald Trump was able to do all of the things that he did and not be held accountable? Same for Bill Barr. Mm. Our constitution needs to be amended so that no other president will ever be able to take office and do the things that Donald Trump has done and his administration and gotten away with. Right. Well, that's what I think. Yeah. Needs power, power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. Cause yeah. this is, I mean, this is an, this is horrible and I'm, we're close. I know we got to wrap this up. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm thankful. I'm thankful I've been able to be at home for the last seven or eight months and my bills are paid. Right. The fact of the matter is right now, October the 1st, a lot of plans expired. There are going to be a lot of American people that are not going to have any money coming in. Homeless, too. Homeless. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No food. Right. Yeah. They have children. You yeah. mean to tell me there's nothing our government could have done? So oh, yeah. They could have done a lot. Exactly. Yeah. So... The books I want to see, Will, are books on how this will never happen again. Amen. And our Constitution getting amended. Mm -hmm. And before we close out, I want to, you know, just kind of let the viewers know I really take, I really take issues like this to heart. Lydia knows. I used to give to my community. And I mean give. Yes on a big level, veterans, strangers, people letting me know, Vonda, this family does not have food they need to eat. Not, 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 here's your groceries. Mm -hmm. What, I can, you don't owe me anything. So I am terribly, terribly 
stress about the plight that Americans are getting ready to be in because it's going to be serious. Yeah. And it's going to as be serious. somebody who was homeless a little bit more than a year ago, I, I, and, and just being, when I did ministry, I used to feed the homeless. I have a really special place in my heart for the homeless, especially the homeless veterans. Um, and I really have a hard time with some of these moratoriums ending. I know that landlords need to get paid. However, these people, there's so many people that are going to be on the streets. And as somebody who's been on the streets before, not knowing where you're going to sleep the next night, it's hard. It is, yeah. it's, and you, you, you feel like God has forgotten you. You feel crushed. You feel like less than a person. So I don't know. For me, this whole stuff, if we don't get, if we don't do anything during this election season and change this, we're looking at a bunch of people being destitute and there's not enough help. There's not enough aid out there for them. And it, it wasn't what I was. It didn't have to be. I mean, well, they could have, come on. Mm -hmm. You, they couldn't pass anything really. Okay. Yeah. So, right. You know, the national debt over the top, you're printing Print money. You know, dead money. These are people. These are people whose lives are going to be impacted. People that have done nothing wrong. Change forever. People's lives are going to be changed forever. Yes. I, you know what, um, you know what, Vonda, Lydia, you know, I, I, I listen to your stories and I listen to your perspectives and, and, you know, they really, I really take them to heart. They really, they really are becoming uh, emotional for me too. And, and, and like you say, you know, um, you know, we've been truly blessed to be in, in yes. different situations. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm thankful for that and I'm humbled by that almost every day. Um, but I do think um, there's there's going to be a larger conversation around you know how do we how do we prevent this type of thing from happening? I do think that America is starting to become a little bit woke and and seeing how you know once we start putting information out there like you know companies made three hundred and fifty billion dollars while Americans lost health care while right. Americans lost right. their homes while right. the top one percent made billions uh, mainly in, in technology once we start seeing that then maybe people will start waking up a little bit but i do think and i, I don't want us to run over lady i want to be my and, and vonda i want to be mindful of you guys time and give you time to talk to close this up but i do think um maybe a conversation for another day would be you know how do we get how do we get um you know back closer together because we're so far apart now yes ideology so far apart and like that really does that really does bother me um how do we get closer together i think about that sometimes and you know what i don't think that we ever will not in our generation not and i don't i don't see it that's yeah. one thing yeah that's and i i agree with you on that and you know what you guys before prior to trump coming into office I had hope. I, I mean, I think I was living in a bubble or something, but now to see the way senators are. Yeah. Well, they're supposed to be working for us. You guys, we, we put mm -hmm. them in an office. Yeah. I've never, so I don't even have, I don't have any, I don't have any hope. It'll be, I really, I, I hope I'm wrong. But I feel like it won't be in it won't be in our lifetime and, and I, generation. Go ahead, Lydia. I do have something to say though. Um, when Wick Waco, that's how you say his name? Wick Waco, yes. Wick, Wick Waco was on. Um, he had mentioned to look up the great hack on uh Netflix. And I I watched it. Yeah. And did I don't know, have any of you guys watched it? No. Thanks. I don't think I, I watched. I watched another film about. Is it about? Is it about the voting? How they um, targeted voters? How Cambridge Analytica targeted wow. voting, um, but it's not just that. It, the Great Hack. He told. He advised us to watch The Great Hack, and I watched it. And I. I had. He had compared that to the social dilemma that I had watched on Netflix. Yeah. 
Yeah. This is all being done deliberately to polarize us. And once you guys, once everybody wakes up and sees what actually social media is doing and what some of these outside interests are doing to manipulate us, because at the end of the day, all of us can be manipulated. That's basically what it is. So if you watch those two shows, you will understand what's going on. And if everybody can watch them, which it's going to be hard to get everybody to watch those shows. But if everybody would watch those, then maybe some, or maybe some key people can watch it and get the word out. Hey, look, let's not let them destroy us. Yeah. Um, we can, that's my only hope. That's the only way. Unless we, that happens, we're headed towards civil war, no matter what. We're headed towards <laughs> civil war. I, I will hope not. Um, I just want to say- I hope um, not too, Will. Yeah, I hope not. Um, and I have some thoughts on that. We could talk about this offline, right. but- um, <laughs> but Donna, I just, I just want to, I just want to say to you all, because I know you, you need to get ready to close. I just want to say, um, as citizens, we should all try to do our part, no matter how big or how small, when it comes to changing, um, you know, the the folks that vote and changing our the uh, the laws. They start local, and you know, so people really need to start focusing on local. Yeah. And one of the things I'm uh, most proud of is that at the beginning of this year. Um, so I did two things. Last year, I said I was not going to tweet anything about Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And I did not. The entire year, I said, I will not have one tweet about Donald Trump. And I did it. This year, my goal was to do something about Donald Trump. And I set a goal of registering um, 100 people to vote. Um, I did that. Um, I registered 100 people to vote uh, in a couple of different phases. And now I'm going to make sure that those people, as we get under 30 days, um, get um, fine transportation to get to the polls. And I've also helped people re register for their absentee ballots. So I'm very proud of that. Um, and then I do work with an organization, a local organization that helps with homelessness. Mm -hmm. uh, I work with them and they have a couple of properties in the local town that they place um, families that are homeless and give them some, some of them permanent and some of them temporary housing. So I'm very proud of, of that work. And I would just say to everybody out there that's watching, um, you know, use your position on your privilege to focus on something that helps bring us closer together, that helps change the way we see each other, that, that actually bridges us. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if, we, if we're able to do that, then it doesn't matter that Donald Trump tells 22,000 lies. It doesn't matter that he has enablers in the Senate, because if you're helping the people local, those people will end up voting those senators out of office. Those people end up voting a Donald Trump out of office. So 22,000 lies, I don't care anymore because I know who that person is. I care about the person that needs to be registered to vote. That's where I'm putting my energy. And I want, I'm gonna follow up <laughs> behind Will. So now I live in Delaware. Before I lived in Panama City, Florida. Mm -hmm. And I was the vice president and one of the founders of the Black Business Chamber of Commerce. Mm. That's great. So I can't stress, if COVID-19 wasn't here, Lydia can confirm it. Vonda would be out and about. Out and about. So I've only been in Delaware for 90 days now, but the voting at the local level, going to your commissioners meetings, to everybody listening, I cannot tell you how important that is. Excuse me. You have, if you have any type of local taxes, your commissioners are in charge of that. Right. They can increase, decrease. They have a lot of control over how you live your life. Vonda, you're getting into another episode now. I'm just, I'm warning you, Vonda. You're getting into another episode. <laughs> so yeah, knowing who your local officials are and voting at the local level, very, very important. Very important. Right. Very. So, okay, and you guys, we're gonna, wrap this up but you're probably like i didn't know it was that much to i didn't know it was that much to bond it yeah we're just getting started guys just getting started yep. me and Veronica can go for hours anyway yeah. <laughs> i thought you were gonna say something lydia oh i'm good <laughs> all right you guys well we're gonna wrap it up we're gonna go around one more time i'm gonna start with lydia lydia please let everybody know um about our merch and okay so my my name you, know, um, you can find me at just Lydia one one one, and you can go and find our merch at uh, ojusttalk.net. Uh, you can find these nifty shirts 
and a couple masks. But anyway, um, hit us up. Well, All right. Uh, I'm Will. You can find me on Twitter, uh, Chili underscore Willie underscore Junior, and that's W I L L Y, like, uh, you know, just like Willie. So Chili <laughs> Willie Junior. Um, I'm not on any of the other social media platforms. Um, but the thing that I'm, I'm very happy to say is that I engage back, I talk to people. Um, I, I normally try to like any uh, comments on my posts. I sometimes reply back. But I do, uh, I do like the engagement. That's my uh, platform of choice. I think the war is fought on Twitter. Um, so that's where you see a lot of resistors. So that's where you find me. Yeah. And I'm Vonda. You can find me at Ovonda, O-H-V-O-N-D-A, on all social media platforms and outlets. Twitter is my favorite, primarily because breaking news, anything, everything just happens so quickly on Twitter. So that is now, that's just my favorite platform to be on. I can say what I want to say. If somebody's offended, oh, well, go back to your own Twitter page. Get off mine. <laughs> so, but everybody's free to have their own thoughts, you know, and opinions. So before we close out, though, I need to shout out Wick Waco. Yes. Indigenous Patriot. He has his own YouTube channel. The dude knows his stuff, very intelligent, very knowledgeable. He doesn't just go to the right, to the center or to the left. He looks at everything and tries his best to be informed about everything that he speaks on. So you guys support at Wick Waco. W-I-K-W-E-K-O. So, and for those of you that don't know, I'm really going to try my best to shout out a minority business owner or a person that's doing a lot for their community. So, if you fall into that category, leave a comment um, on our YouTube channel and let me know. So, with that being said, please remember the comeback is always greater than the setback. And we will see you guys later. Stay safe. Peace. Right, mask it up. <laughs>